What constitutes a complete EDC kit means different things to different people. But one thing is for sure. When it comes to building out our everyday carry, budget is near the top of the list of considerations. And in this video, I'm gonna share two EDC setups, but the two are at a tenfold price delta. To keep things as consistent as possible, I've decided to choose a theme. And in this edition, I've decided to go with a woodlands theme comprised primarily of green and brown earth tones. Kicking things off with the wallet, on the budget end, I picked out this Herschel Charlie wallet in the camo canvas colorway. I absolutely love the Herschel Charlie, and it was, for over a decade, my slim wallet of choice. Coming in at 22 US dollars, it's really quite budget friendly, and when it comes to durability, I can personally attest to this being a wallet that'll easily last you over 10 years of daily use and abuse, whether you go for a canvas option or the more premium leather option. To do a full loadout though, with two card slots on both the front and back for quick access to four frequently used cards, and a central top loading slot that can accommodate, honestly, more than another four cards. But for ease of access and considering you may want to tuck a few bills of cash in there as well, I would recommend this wallet for folks who typically need to carry no more than eight cards and a bit of emergency cash. Since I personally need to carry 7 cards total, this Herschel Charlie most certainly fits my needs. And if you're interested in checking it out, I've linked it in the description below along with everything else in this video. Going to the higher end side, for the wallet, I've decided to put the Bellroy Slim Sleeve into the more expensive kit. But this one is in their Java Coco leather colorway. With the ability to store up to 12 cards, with full closed coverage and protection, this wallet features two quick single card access pockets and two side loader sleeves that can accommodate five cards on each side, with a handy pull tab extractor on the right side for your more frequently accessed secondary stash of cards. With an MSRP that ranges between 79 and 115 US dollars, this Java Coco one is on the lower end of the spectrum at 79 dollars. Now, given that I'm calling this the woodland theme comparison video, may as well move onto the items with actual wood on them. The pocket knives. On the budget kit side, I have here the Civivi Pintail Flipper with Gaborsha handle scales and a Damascus steel blade. And I use air quotes because there's debate as to what qualifies as Damascus steel. And I won't go into my typical nerdy deep dive in the interest of time, but I will say that Civivi has really impressed me over the past few years with the sheer bang for buck value of their lineup especially with my experience when it comes to their quality assurance, whether it's action, blade centering, blade play, or really lack thereof, and the overall finishing. This pintail has a drop point hollow grind blade coming in at three inches, and as my personal entry point into the Damascus blade look is a huge win for me. Clocking in on Amazon at 83 US dollars, it's definitely the most expensive item in this complete budget EDC kit, but well worth it in my opinion. But now it's time to compare it to the more expensive side. And for the higher end kit, I've opted for the Benchmade Crooked River Mini. I think you'll be hard pressed to find someone who actively dislikes the shapes and lines of this knife. It's so classic looking, it manages to feel contemporary at the same time. I mean, you might not like the orange accents at the pivot or backspacer. You might not like the wooden scales, but the lines and curves of this knife are to me absolutely perfect some serious elevated vintage Buck 110 vibes with a crooked twist. This 3.4 inch clip point blade in a gorgeous satin finish on S30V steel really continues the older world vintage look, but with an MSRP of 270 US dollars is definitely square in the mid range of EDC knife prices and at least for me and my personal financial situation is a serious consideration. When deployed, the Civivi is set with a liner lock, while the Crooked River engages Benchmade's ambidextrous axis lock. And speaking of deployment, this is one part where you can feel and hear the sturdier confidence of the premium price you are paying with the Benchmade. I'll put them close to my microphone and you can hear the Civivi is more of a clack, while the Benchmade is more of a and that comes down to the density of the stainless steel liners and the denser diamond back wood used in the Benchmade. But again, trade-off is size, weight, overall thickness, and of course, price. At more than three times the cost of the pintail and more than four times that of the Elementum. We'll dash on over to the flashlights now. The torches in these kits. And on the budget end, I still stand by the Thrunite BSSW1 in OD green. I absolutely love this little torch and it's permanently clipped into this small espionner by Night Eyes to my car keys for easy removal. 
It's nice and compact, coming in at just over two and a half inches, but its anodized aluminum construction inspires a ton of confidence. I love that it has a USB rechargeable battery, although it kind of sucks that it's basically the only micro USB device I still own. So if they ever release another version with USB type C, it's a non-decision for me. I'm buying it instantly. But it does have a robust turbo mode for its size, going all the way up to nearly 700 lumens. From a general design perspective, something that's important for me for my EDC torches is mounting options. And this BSSW1 features this handy double clip, so I can go anchor it to my strap or my pocket if need be, or use the other side and clip it to the brim of my baseball cap for hands-free illumination. And lastly, it's got a magnetic booty, so attaching it under the hood of my car or on a bunch of magnet-friendly surfaces has definitely come in handy before. At 27 US dollars, it's definitely a budget-friendly option for something of such respectable quality and durability. Hopping over to the higher end, I have chosen the Olight Warrior Mini version 2 in this limited edition OD Green as well. With a max turbo brightness of nearly three times that of the through night, the size at roughly double, coming in at just over four and a half inches, is justified for the added output. It's got a side switch just like the through night, but the magnetic butt also functions as a tail switch, and like the BSSW1, features a double sided clip for maximum versatility for mounting and anchoring. Similarly to the through night, my main gripe is indeed with the charging, where it is a USB charger on the brick end, but requires this proprietary magnetic charging disc to anchor to the butt of the flashlight for regular charging. But also, if you're really paranoid about the cable, the Warrior Mini 2 uses super common 18650 batteries, and you can easily find dedicated battery and charger kits all over Amazon. This Olight is about three times the price of the through night, coming in with an 89 US dollar MSRP. And with the flashlights out of the way, let's move on over to the keyring solutions. On the budget end, we have this green dual carabiner that conveniently doubles as a bottle opener. It's called the Ah by Night Eyes, and it's a fun and functional piece. At just $7, it most certainly doesn't break the bank, but more importantly, functions the way my absolute favorite budget accessory does, the S-Beaner number no. 4 size by Night Eyes. You can anchor your home keys on one end and your car keys on the other for easy separation, or use one side of the dual carabiner to clip onto your belt loop or bag. On the higher end, I'm going with a little bit of shameless self-promotion here, and it's the Spec DNT. A super short five-day Kickstarter campaign my friend Eric and I did back in 2020, made from a solid piece of naturally antimicrobial copper, designed to navigate frequently touched surfaces that you face throughout your day, including opening doors, hanging onto transit poles, and pushing buttons. Between me and you though, I mainly use it as a finger-spinning fidget toy, and although it was a super short campaign, the feedback was awesome, and I would love to know in the comments below if you might be interested in one, because Eric and I have been considering firing up our machines at the workshop and making another batch. But at four times the price of the Night Eyes budget option, necessitated by the absolutely insane inflation of the price of copper, it's definitely at a premium price point. As we slip out of the key solution and into the wristwatches, on the budget end, we've got the Casio F91W in this OD green case and bezel with black resin strap. I love the super vintage vibe in this colorway and the no frills functionality is fantastic. Easy to read the time and date at a glance, an alarm and a stopwatch, you really can't go wrong for 20 US dollars. With this ultra thin profile, lightweight and 36 mm case, it just stays out of the way while maintaining that old school look. And with 30 meters or 100 feet of water resistance, it's just an awesome daily EDC beater watch you don't have to think twice about and definitely don't need to baby. For the higher end side of things, the watch is by far the most expensive item to the kit. To keep the color and theme harmony, I went with the Seiko Prospects SPB 121J1. It's rocking the tried, tested, and true 6R35 caliber movement with a very respectable 70 hour power reserve. And I love everything about this design of the watch. I love the sunburst green dial. I love the rotating inner compass bezel, although I personally never use it. I absolutely love the gold cathedral hands and everything down to the old school font of the even numbers paired with the triangular applied indices at the odd number spots. And unlike many people, I actually genuinely like the magnified Cyclops date window over the three o'clock position. With a 40 millimeter case, a screw down crown to boost it to a 200 meter or 660 feet of water resistance, an exhibition case back so I can catch a glimpse of that automatic 6R35 movement, and a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the underside, I feel like Seiko's done the original Saab 017 model justice, and in that, has managed to do something that's quite rare in watches. 
To have a piece that's really versatile, looking equally at home with a pair of jeans and sneakers as it does with a suit and a tie. Again, this is by far the most expensive item in this higher-end woodland-themed EDC coming in with an MSRP of $725, US but you can quite easily find it for less, even on Amazon. Both of these watches are linked down below if you want to read a bit more about the specs and features, and as we slip out of the watches, we'll move on to notebooks. I always say it, but I use my notebook literally more than I use my phone. On the budget end, I've gone with the beloved and ubiquitous Field Notes brand dotted grid notebook with craft cover. There's not much more to say about Field Notes. They are beloved for a reason. The perfect size for most people, not bulky for easy pocketability, easily replaceable, and yet the quality of the paper used is one that's incredibly fantastic when compared to your regular school line sheets. And with a cult-like following and obsessive collectors for their quarterly limited drops, it's just a reliable sidekick with some real life lore. On the higher end of things, I've gone with my beloved Traveler's Company notebook in their passport size with this deep chocolate brown leather cover. With customizations from all types of notebook inserts to cotton zipper pouches, sticky note caddies, and so much more, I don't go anywhere without this bad boy. But for the purposes of this video and to be more in line with the size of the field notes in the budget option, this chocolate passport size fits the bill. As you saw my regular size daily carrier, I attached a tin airplane charm, also by Travelers, and for this passport size, I've opted to add this vintage camera charm. All of their leather shells come with a notebook insert with an MSRP of $41 US dollars, and their charms have an MSRP of $16. And with the notebook as part of the EDC, you'll of course need something to write with, and so we move on to the pen to pair with these woodland-themed EDC kits. On the budget side, I went with the famous Zebra F301. With a stainless steel body, a 0.7mm ballpoint tip, confident clicking action, and a metal clip, this pen punches far above its weight class and is so popular for a reason. The MSRP for this 4-pack is $12 US dollars and includes this deep green one that matches nicely with our woodland theme. Since we're just using this green one, I'm listing this pen as $3 in the tally of this bundle kit. On the higher end, I've gone with what I actually use every day, and so I have opted to feature these two Lamy Safari fountain pens in the Savannah Green and Terra colorways. Something that many folks have asked about in many other videos that have shown it is this double pen clip by a company called The Superior Labor. I absolutely love this thing. The ultra tightly compressed brass clip with the branding on one side and the ultra high quality leather and stitch work really makes this a forever item. But with the materials and handmade craftsmanship that matches the name of the company, they are charging us for that superior labor. The clip alone has an MSRP of 38 US dollars, but many retailers charge even more since they're a small workshop out of Japan and finding retailers isn't the easiest. But if you use pens as frequently as I do and like me need two different colored inks, you just might consider it, and my recommendation is to go to Google and type in Superior Labor Pen Clip plus your city or country, and just see what shows up. But operating at its MSRP of $38 US plus $29 for each of the Lamy Safaris brings us to a total of $96 for the pens portion of the higher-end EDC. And as we lay everything out on both sides and run the final tally, the higher end kit comes in at 1,336 US dollars. So hey, why don't we add this dark green Elements Tech Case Sling by Alpaca for another $79 to bring it up to 1,415 US dollars so we're closer to that $1,500 claim in the title. And for the budget side, this complete EDC you see here comes in at 169 US dollars. But if instead of the Civivi Pintail Flipper, you opt for the Elementum with the same wood scales, it drops us down to 149 dollars, just a buck shy of the 150 promise in the title. And speaking of titles, if you liked this drastic price difference in two full kits idea, I'd love to hear your suggestions for different themes down in the comments below. And if you want to see a very detailed breakdown of my full EDC kit, you'll definitely want to check out these videos right over here. So I'm going to leave them on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one to watch. But while you're deciding, if you want a week of good luck, hit that like button. But if you want a year of good luck, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop.